Welcome to episode two of MedMastery's Cardiology Digest, where expert insights are unleashed. Join us weekly as we bring you the latest scientific findings in the field of cardiology. Stay up to date with our bite-sized summaries of the late-breaking trials. So hit the subscribe button and never miss an important update in your field ever again. In today's episode, we'll cover the benefits of Mediterranean and low-fat diets for cardiovascular health, the low utilization of statins for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease prevention. You'll learn who benefits from cardiac resynchronization therapy, or CRT. And finally, we're going to learn about the worsening of cardiovascular risk factors in young Americans. We're Nora and Peter, and we'll guide you through this show. But before we get started, definitely make sure to check out our award-winning clinical skills courses on topics like ECG, chest x-ray, echocardiography, point-of-care ultrasound, vascular ultrasound, cardiac CT, mechanical ventilation, and so much more. We are the trusted skills training platform for hundreds of thousands of clinicians worldwide. All our courses are CME accredited, and we are highly commended by the British Medical Association. So definitely come and visit us at www.medmastery.com. But now, on with the show. By the way, we'll provide links to all of the papers discussed in today's episode in our show notes. Nora, what's the first paper in our lineup today? Well, Peter, our first study was published in the BMJ in March 2023. This study shows that the Mediterranean diet and low-fat diets can lower cardiovascular risk. So this meta-analysis reviewed 40 different randomized studies involving 35,000 adults who were at high risk of having cardiovascular problems. The participants were on structured dietary programs for at least nine months and were either compared with each other or given minimal intervention which means no advice, usual care, or brief advice. Basically, the research team found that these diets help to reduce overall and CV-related mortality, non-fatal myocardial infarction, and stroke significantly, while other diets didn't have much of an impact. The Mediterranean diet was the most beneficial amongst the seven different diets studied, including the low-fat diet. Interestingly, when the two diets were compared against each other, their effects on mortality and non-fatal MI were pretty similar. This study adds to the growing evidence that a Mediterranean diet with an emphasis on fruits, vegetables, fish, and monounsaturated fats can positively impact cardiovascular health. This analysis is a great reminder that our diets play a crucial role in our overall health. Thanks, Nora. So this study backs up the idea that the Mediterranean diet is awesome for your heart, shows that a simple low-fat diet might be just as good, and hints that both diets could help folks with higher risks live longer. What else do we have, Nora? The next study sheds light on the low utilization of statins for primary prevention of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, or ASCVD. The paper was published in JAMA Cardiology in March 2023. Researchers found that statin use for primary prevention of ASCVD remains low across all races and ethnicities. The study results further showed significant disparities in ASCVD rates between the black and white populations. To examine trends in statin use for primary prevention, Researchers analyzed nationally representative U.S. survey data from participants aged 40 to 75 years old without ASCVD, diabetes, or elevated LDL cholesterol levels. The mean age of participants was 62 years, and self-identified race or ethnicity was white at 73%, black at 13%, Hispanic 10%, or Asian 4%. Overall, white participants had the highest prevalence of statin use at 28%, similar to the rate in Asian participants at 26%, and significantly higher than the rates in Black at 20% and Hispanic participants at 15%. Within each race and ethnicity group, there was a graded increase in statin use with increasing ASCVD risk. However, statin use remained lowest among Black and Hispanic participants in all risk categories. These data highlight the ongoing disparities in ASCVD prevention and the need for healthcare providers to be aware of and address the underutilization of statins among those who may benefit the most.
So not enough people, especially black and Hispanic adults, are using statins to prevent cardiovascular disease. This is troubling because these groups are at higher risk for developing heart problems. The good news is that statins are affordable, safe, and effective. The bad news is that there are a variety of reasons why people aren't using them. This fact should be top of mind when we take care of these patients. Let's move on. Time for a quiz. Let's assume you have a patient with atrial fibrillation who is on a NOAC on a non-vitamin K antagonist oral anticoagulant. Let's assume they need a stent. How long should they receive dual antiplatelet therapy with aspirin and a P2Y12 inhibitor together with their NOAC? What do you think? We'll give you a bit of time after which Nora will give you the answer. Well, here's the answer. This was nicely summarized in a paper entitled Antithrombotic Therapy in Patients with Atrial Fibrillation Treated with Oral Anticoagulation Undergoing Percutaneous Coronary Intervention Published in Circulation in February 2021 Triple therapy consisting of a NOAC plus dual antiplatelet therapy should be given to all patients during the peri-PCI period, meaning during inpatient stay, until time of discharge, up to one week after PCI. In patients with very high thrombotic risk, triple therapy can be extended to one month. The default strategy is to then stop aspirin and continue treatment with a P2Y12 inhibitor, preferably clopidogrel in combination with a NOAC. This is also called double therapy. Double therapy should be given for 6 to 12 months, with the actual duration depending on the ischemic and bleeding risk profile of the patient. After this time, patients should discontinue antiplatelet therapy and receive oral anticoagulation alone. If you want to become a full-blown atrial fibrillation master, definitely make sure to check out MedMastery's CME-accredited Atrial Fibrillation Essentials course. And if you want to learn how to interpret and perform coronary angiograms and PCI, our Coronary Angiography Essentials and PCI Essentials courses are for you. But now, on with the show. Our next study is a recent meta-analysis published in March 2023 in circulation titled Clarification on which patients benefit from cardiac resynchronization. This study examined the benefits of cardiac resynchronization therapy or CRT for patients with dilated cardiomyopathies and conduction system disease. Although the therapy has previously shown to be effective in improving the quality of life and longevity of such patients, the results of randomized controlled trials have been inconsistent in determining which patients benefit the most. To address this issue, researchers conducted a patient-level meta-analysis using data from seven RCTs. With a sample size of 6,264 patients, the majority or 73% of whom had left bundle branch block, 16% had nonspecific intraventricular conduction delay, and 11% had right bundle branch block. The results show that only those with QRS duration of equal to or greater than 150 milliseconds and either left bundle branch block or intraventricular conduction delay benefited from CRT, but not those with right bundle branch block. The therapy was associated with a significantly lower risk for heart failure hospitalization or death in those patients. It is important to note that there was no benefit of CRT observed when the QRS was less than 150 milliseconds for any groups. You know how there's been some confusion around who exactly benefits from CRT? Well, this meta-analysis has finally shed some light on the matter. Basically, it can help us figure out which patients are going to benefit from CRT and which ones won't. Super helpful info for when the guidelines get updated. But here's the kicker. Even before that happens, we need to change our practices. Specifically, we should only implant CRTs in patients with left bundle branch block or intraventricular conduction delays, and only if the QRS duration is equal to or greater than 150 milliseconds. What's next, Nora? According to a recent study published in JAMA in March 2023, declines in cardiovascular mortality have remained stagnant in the U.S. over the past decade. But what's causing this lack of progress? To answer this question, researchers decided to look at specific risk factors among young adults in the U.S. In total, 
They analyze data from over 12,000 adults aged 20 to 44, paying attention to changes in risk factor prevalence from 2009 to 2020. So what did they find? Well, the prevalence of diabetes increased from 3% to 4.1%, while the percentage of young adults classed as obese rose from 32.7% to 40.9%. Meanwhile, overall, hypertension rose, not statistically significantly, from 9.3% to 11.5%. However, significant increases in hypertension were found for black young adults from 16.2% to 20.1%, Mexican-American young adults from 6.5% to 9.5%, and other Hispanic young adults from 4.4% to a staggering 10.5%. Unfortunately, despite these concerning trends, treatment and control rates for hypertension and diabetes did not increase between the two survey periods. But it's not all bad news. There was one positive finding. Hyperlipidemia prevalence actually declined overall from 40.5% to 36.1%. The study authors believe this may reflect greater regulation around trans fatty acids and other partially hydrogenated oils. Have you heard about the recent decline in life expectancy in the U.S., Nora? It's not good news, especially for young and middle-aged adults. COVID-19 and other non-cardiac causes are part of the problem, but even more concerning is the increase in heart disease between 2020 and 2021. It's responsible for over 4% of the decline. The editorialists are really emphasizing the importance of preventing cardiovascular disease, especially during young adulthood. In fact, studies have shown that people who make it to midlife with optimal risk factor levels live longer, healthier lives with low CVD risk. So these findings should really be a wake-up call for all of us. So this was our last study for today. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of MedMastery's Cardiology Digest, where expert insights are unleashed. If you want to learn or improve skills like echocardiography, ECG interpretation, cardiac CT, cardiac MRI, coronary angiography, PCI, and other cardiology power skills, definitely make sure to visit us at medmastery.com. A free MedMastery trial account will give you access to the first chapters of each course, so you can check out how we teach and to see if we're a good fit for each other. With that being said, we wish you a great day. Take care. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you at the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe.